Never in my life did I envision a day when, before leaving the house, I had to make the tough decision on which mask to bring with me today. Normally the decision is, well, what beer I'm going to be drinking today. And you know we can't forget those sunglasses and that hand sanitizer. It's going to be a beautiful day today. The temperature is going to be near 70 degrees. I just had to get out of the house. I'm tired of being cooped up other than going to work or the grocery store. Got my mask on. Plan on doing a bunch of social distancing today. But again, just had to get out and experience like the real world and get a little bit of exercise. For today's detour, we're going to head back to a place I haven't been to in, well, for exactly two months. The last time I was in the city of Boston, I had just flown back from Florida after getting off a cruise. That was right when this whole pandemic started. But today we're going to head back into the city and see how the city looks during quarantine time. I don't ever drive around wearing my mask, but I just wanted to show in this video that I was leaving my house being safe. I'm right now parked in the city of Boston at a free parking meter. That's right, a free parking meter. I'm not putting any money in. They're not giving tickets. They're not towing cars. Why pay for a parking garage when I can park here for free? This is eerie, man. There's nobody around. This is going to be like a Twilight Zone episode, but I had to document how the city of Boston looks right now during quarantine. Well, maybe they are giving parking tickets. There's a woman right there that's reading the meters. Okay, scratch that. They are, you know, they are enforcing the parking. I just uh, paid my two fifty for two hours. I'm not going to be in this area for two hours, so I'll mosey around here and then I'll go to another part of Boston to show you what's going on. Different different sections of the city during quarantine time. Two fifty is still cheaper than eighteen dollars any day, right? <laughs> Check out that guy dancing. He's actually listening to Our House by Madness. Why didn't you guys tell me that this side of my face is shaved lower than this side? That's all I can concentrate on now. Well, besides this acne. But good thing I'll be wearing a mask the rest of the day. We won't have to deal with this uh, imperfection. I will clean this side up before the outro of this video. This is totally odd. I'm standing right here in the middle of State Street. Right at the end of the street is the old state house. There is absolutely nobody out here. There's no traffic whatsoever. Any other Saturday and any given year, this street would be full of people and cars right now. Well, there's a couple of people walking around, a couple of cars driving, but pretty much desolate. This is the old state house where this is the exact site in 1770 where the Boston massacre happened, right here on this spot. Actually, it's a couple of feet behind me. I'll show you that spot. Right there, that's the exact site of the 1770 Boston massacre. Another fun fact about the old Boston State House is right there from that balcony was read the Declaration of Independence. I'm not the only person wearing a mask in the city of Boston right now. Celtics great Bill Russell is also wearing a mask, doing his social distancing thing right now. There's still a few people out here walking around, riding their bikes. It's a, it's a beautiful spring day here in the city of Boston. A little overcast, but it's uh, better than a snowbank. And it's definitely better than being cooped up in your house. There is absolutely zero activity out here at Faneuil Hall Marketplace, Quincy Market, right here in Boston. Normally there would be street performers out here playing music and doing acrobatics and all kinds of fun stuff. Right now, not so much. Considering the world was shut down around March 15th, March 16th, I guarantee there was no Jersey Boy experience here in Boston on the 18th through the 22nd. The cobblestones and sidewalks of Quincy Market, totally bare of people. Well, there's a couple out here taking photos and walking their dogs and pushing their baby strollers, but for the most part, this is a ghost town. Normally in this spot right behind me, there'd be a guy on a unicycle juggling swords. And then I would go over there and have a beer at the Salty Dog, but not anytime soon, I don't think, my friends. The Faneuil Hall Cheers, where absolutely nobody knows your name right now because, well, there's nobody in there to serve you or to know your name. In fact, the last time I was down here, I was down here for the Christmas tree lighting right there at the end of this cobblestone. A huge Christmas tree and a, a very, very, very large crowd of people out there singing along to the Christmas carols and enjoying the Christmas experience. It's good to see Red Ara back out here still smoking a stogie and sporting a mask and a hospital gown. I'm standing six feet from him. 
Yeah, I can't say it enough. This is absolutely like mind-blowing Twilight Zone kind of stuff. Seeing this on a Saturday, right here, Quincy Market, Faneuil Hall, City of Boston. Normally hustle and bustle, people just shoulder to shoulder. People walking around eating great food and seeing great musical acts. And this is sad. There are no tickets being sold and no happy voices of children riding this carousel here on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Once Boston is back open and operational, I'm definitely gonna ride this carousel. I've lived in this area for what, almost 47 years and I've never ridden this carousel. Although this carousel has only been here about five years probably, but still, nonetheless, I've never ridden it. It's gonna be a bucket list. I'm gonna do it this year. One of my goals, once the city of Boston is well, back open and prospering. On any other normal spring day, this place would be full of tourists and maybe people that live in the city of Boston out here purchasing tickets for the old town trolley. Gives you a tour of the history of Boston. You can jump on and off. You can go inside bars and get back on the trolley after you're done having a couple. It's a great time. Every time I have friends from out of town who visit me, I bring them on the old town trolley. Right now, non-operational. There are no whale watch tickets being sold outside the New England Aquarium. Because just like everything else in the city of Boston currently, the New England Aquarium is closed. Although we might be able to get some footage of the seals that are constantly swimming around outside the aquarium. Outside the aquarium. You'll see what I mean. See what I mean? These, uh, these seals, they swim outside the aquarium. This is like a free sneak preview of what's in the aquarium. Here he comes. It's almost like you're watching a Jaws movie, watching the shark come at you. Look at this thing. Showing off like there's no quarantine at all. Currently the Godzilla is not in port. That's a huge speedboat that takes you out and does these uh, massive 360s. You get water all over you and you're going real fast. And then across the way behind where the Godzilla would have been docked is the well, bar that I frequent quite a bit in the summertime. Obviously closed right now. I'll tell you what, there's not too much social distancing going on out here in this park here in the Boston North End. See some people playing some soccer, people hanging out underneath the tree. This whole park area is full of people. People enjoying the beautiful day, walking through this stunning trellis. Those soccer players are wearing masks though. Look at the beautiful flowers growing out here. I'm a little nervous about this. Is this a dead body or is this uh, some trash? All right, we gotta check out the non-hustle and bustle of the North End restaurants. Hanover Street, which is Boston's Little Italy, is again a ghost town right now. Normally on any weekend, any night of the year, this would be full of people and cars looking to come pick up some great homemade Italian food. This is the best place in Boston to eat. Wait, 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 wait. Check this out, Parla. Are those beers to go? There is normally an enormous line outside of modern pastry. Everybody trying to get those cannolis. This is, you walk right in. There's no wait. Oh, uh, we step inside this establishment when I'm in the North End. I think I'm gonna step inside here again today because they got a $3 special for the slice of pizza. It feels totally weird being inside of a real functioning bar. Can't drink inside here, but I ordered a couple to go while I Wait for my pizza. Mike's Pastry, another staple of the North End with currently no line outside for those cannolis. You go walk right inside and get those Italian treats with no weight whatsoever. Unheard of. Besides pizzas and cannolis, the North End also has, well, this pretty historic monument right here. The Old North Church in Paul Revere. Put the lanterns at the top of the church, warning us how the British are coming. One if by land, two if by sea. Meaning one lantern if they're coming by land, two lanterns if they're coming by sea. 
well, there's no lanterns right now illuminating this place, but I can tell you that I have two slices of pizza in my left hand, letting you know that the hungry are coming. Look at the sassy slices of pizza. I mean, granted they're about an hour old. I can't wait for Sullivan's Tap to open up again. It's the longest bar in Boston. It runs from, well, this street down to the next street. It's legit, like, the bar runs from one street to another street. It's the longest bar in Boston. And you can find Sullivan's Tap right across the street from the TD Garden. Formerly the Boston Garden. Now the TD Garden. Here on Causeway Street. There's never ever been a time in my life where I've been outside the Boston Garden, the TD Garden, where there's been no other people but me. And Bobby Orr. That's right, the legendary Bobby Orr from the Boston Bruins. Number four, Bobby Orr. A legendary hockey player. He was also a, a good friend of mine back in the uh, mid-80s as he was my baseball coach. I don't know my father. His son was on our team, and Bobby Orr was a baseball coach on that same team. So he knew about hockey, and he knew about baseball. Been to the guy's house many times. I think this is only the second time I've been out here to the Boston Garden. I'm sorry, the TD Garden. Since the brand new escalator has been erected, you take the escalator or the stairs up to the main level for ticketing. This is also the area where you, well, North Station where you take a train in. I believe that this escalator takes you above the train station level. So if you come out here for your Bruins, your Celtics, your wrestling, your concert events, and you're not on the train, you can just take the escalator right up to the TD Garden. Again, I've only been here, I think, for one event. I believe it was a wrestling event. Within the last year since this thing's been open, it's brand new. Okay, just to be totally transparent with you, right now is currently about two weeks after I filmed that first part of the video. It ran out of daylight and I wanted to show you some more of the Boston sights and sounds during quarantine time. Again, two weeks later, I get my beard shaved a little bit down, but you couldn't tell that if I was wearing a mask. But to help the editing process out, I wanted to wear the same hat, the same shirt. I got the same mask. Just going to pop it in right here and continue this video. Today is 10 degrees warmer. It's currently 80 degrees here on Beacon Hill in Boston. The rest of Boston is 80 degrees as well. They are doing ticking out here today, too, if you didn't pay your meter. That guy just got a ticket. The next stop on this detour of Boston during the pandemic is right here at the Boston Common. It's not the most beautiful day out here in the city of Boston, but I pretty much got the whole Boston Common to myself. There are a few people out here walking around and throwing the ball to their dog for a little chase. But besides that, pretty much me. Boston Strong, a motto of Boston since the bombings of the Boston Marathon in 2013. The Frog Pond here on the Boston Common, not currently open. Actually, it still looks like it did back last time I was here in December when it was live ice skating out here. Normally in the spring and summer, it's open to people to come out there and wade in the water. Of course, it's filled up with water. You can, I don't know, maybe about knee high, you can go out there and splash around on a nice summer day here in the city of Boston. Yeah, normally there's like, I think there's usually like a, usually a big fountain in here spraying up water and people are frolicking in the water, kicking the water around, splashing their friends. Not right now, but maybe later this summer, this will be open and operational once again. The Tadpole Playground is also closed currently. Hopefully this place will be open up this summer for people want to come out and bring their kids and play around here on Boston Common. Get a picture with the frogs here at the frog pond. Check out this frog. He kind of looks like Michael Jackson. Got that one glove on. No mask though, but he's been semi-safe out here. 
during this pandemic. The Granary Burial Ground, the resting place of Paul Revere. We looked at his statue earlier, remember? One if by land, two if by sea. John Hancock himself is also buried here at this burial ground. We're gonna walk by his building, well, a building named after him, here a little bit later in this detour. Well, I've been on a ghost tour of this cemetery a few years ago and they show you all the cemetery plots. I forget exactly which one is Paul Revere's, but it's somewhere in this cemetery, I assure you of that. It's definitely not the big one right there in front, but it is for sure 100% in this cemetery someplace. Wait, could it be the one way over there? There was a picture on that on that tombstone. Right there, a little bit more history lesson for you guys, even though I can't point out the exact plot of Paul Revere's grave, but once again, inside this cemetery. There are absolutely no cars driving up the street towards the Massachusetts State House. Right behind me is the Massachusetts State House, where all the laws for the state of Massachusetts are made right inside this building. It's also the building that definitely brings us from phase one to phase two to phase three to phase four of this pandemic throughout the city of Boston. This is very strange. It's after 5 p.m. on a Thursday and there's nobody driving down Beacon Hill down towards the Bull and Finch, which is the Cheers Bar. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Well, nobody knows your name right now because well, this place isn't open right now unless it's open for takeout. If it is, I will give a little bit of money to Cheers and get some food to go. But this is the outside of the TV show for Cheers. The inside of this bar looks nothing like it does on the TV show, but Right here is the, uh, this is what you see in the opening credits. There is currently a menu right there. I'd be interested to know if I can get a burger to go, maybe a couple beers to go. It is National Burger Day today. Whoa, this is kind of creepy. I didn't even know that Woody Harrelson was like checking me out, creeping on me out here during quarantine. What's up, Woody? It looks like currently it's not open because this is the gate that would bring you down to the stairs to the Cheers bar to get your food. So I don't think they're open right now. Unfortunate. But I still have a plan number two, which was my original plan for coming out today for National Hamburger Day. We have moved up the street from the Boston Common to the Boston Public Garden, where normally out here on a spring summer day, you would see the swan boats. Don't think I'm gonna be seeing that stuff today. This is so upsetting to me. Just like last week, there was a picture here on the Boston Public Garden of these make way for duckling statues all wearing masks, socially distancing. I mean, a little bit less than six feet, but I would say two feet between each duck. I mean, I'm wearing a mask. Why aren't they, right? Look at this statue of America's first president, George Washington, over here in the Boston Public Garden. Normally on a spring and summer day, the swan boats would be launching right from underneath this bridge in the shadow of the John Hancock building. Right here, this is where the swan boats would take flight, take sail on this waterway here that goes underneath this bridge. To that side of the public garden. Normally on any other Thursday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. this road would be bumper to bumper traffic. About a half an hour to get down Boylston Street. Right now not so much. Not a car driving currently down the Marathon route. Right there I'm crossing the Boston Marathon finish line. You got it here on detours. I'm winded. 
Breaking news as I was standing here at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. I just got word that the Boston Marathon has been officially canceled this year. It was postponed till September. Now, officially canceled. You know I wasn't going to bring you out to the city of Boston without bringing you out to Fenway Park. Currently, it's not open right now. There's no baseball games going on, but I'm still going to walk around the outside and show you what Fenway Park looks like during quarantine times. It took us a long time, but look at all those World Series championships since the year 1918. I was actually at the World Series 2007. Was that the year I was there? 2013? It was one of those two. I think it was 2007. I got a video of that. Yeah, it was definitely 2007. It was the second World Series championship within like, you know, that like couple of years. What was it? 2004, 2007? Yeah, definitely 2007. I was here. Here's the video. I don't know if you guys can hear, but behind me, there's actually a live concert going on here at Fenway Park. It's, well, it's it's a live, uh, what do you say, a test show for the Dropkick Murphys. They're going to be broadcasting live out here at Fenway Park tomorrow night, simulcast with Bruce Springsteen in New Jersey. No fans out here, just Dropkick Murphys by themselves out here at Fenway Park in Bruce Springsteen in New Jersey. It's going to be streaming live all over your internets. We're listening to like the uh, the practice show. It's confirmed they're gonna be playing the boys are back, the boys are back, the boys are back, because I just heard them playing it. They're testing it out. Now they're playing a local favorite, the state of Massachusetts. That's the name of the song, and that's the state we're in right now. No mask out here for Ted Williams tonight. The great and mighty Carl Yastrzemski. Now he's not wearing a mask out here tonight outside Fenway Park. And none of these fellas behind me are wearing a mask either. Am I the only one social distancing out here during phase one in Boston? I just did the phase one in Boston. Wow, check this out. Lansdowne Street right outside of Boston's Fenway Park. Normally a street full of hustle and bustle, all these restaurants and bars, letting people in, getting their cocktails before a game or a concert. Right now, absolutely nobody out here. Complete ghost town. The Dropkick Murphys are still doing their sound check for tomorrow night's big internet concert. Right across the street from here. I've seen the Dropkick Murphys many times during the St. Patty's Day tour. They play out here like all weekend during St. Patty's Day, like seven shows. I still can't believe there's absolutely nobody out here on Lansdowne Street. Do 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 Twilight Zone. Can you hear the drop kick Murphy's out there practicing for tomorrow night show? Be nice if I can get inside there somehow. Can you hear him? This is the absolute closest we're getting to this Dropkick Murphys concert. No farther can I go than this wall. Looking into the belly of Fenway Park. Fenway Park is not the main reason why I came to this neighborhood today. In fact, the building right behind me is the main reason why I came to this neighborhood today. It's May 28th and it's National Hamburger Day. And I'm bringing you to my favorite hamburger place. That's right, it's Tasty Burger. Just check out this spectacular menu. Yeah. Although I'm probably gonna walk away with the bag of burgers. That's an actual thing out there. Right there, a sack of five burgers. Oh yeah. In the words of the macho man, Randy Savage, get the best burgers out here in Boston. Count them, one, two, three, four, and I already ate one in the car, so that's five hamburgers. Happy Hamburger Day 2020. Ooh, yeah. Here it is the next day. It's Friday, May 29th. Get ready for the big Dropkick Murphys Bruce Springsteen live stream over the Dropkick Murphys YouTube channel. Got that all set up. Got three burgers left over from Tasty Burger from last night. I had one this morning. They're still good the next day. And I got plenty of beer in the beer fridge to get me through tonight's concert.
Got that ice cold Sam Adams porch rocker. Kicking off summer in style. I hope I don't get hit with copyright strikes from Bruce or Dropkick Murphys. Whoa, two, three, four. <laughs> It is Sunday, May 31st. This is what's going on right now in the city of Boston. The police crews are on fire now. The one that they were just tearing apart and breaking windows with skateboards and hammers. Wow. And uh, here's where you can just see, wow. uh, the crowd of people, that, that rather large crowd. It is now time people are now lighting fires in the Boston Common. A couple of trash cans on fire. They're police are lighting off the flashbangs to get everybody to disperse the area. Into downtown Boston through the common. But, uh, wow. It was just there. Just there a couple days ago. Now they're setting the Walgreens on fire. Look at They're setting the Walgreens on fire. Well, that's going to be it for my coverage of the city of Boston during phase one of this pandemic. If viruses weren't bad enough, now we get fires and looting. Hopefully everything's over pretty soon. The virus, the looting, the fires, and the city of Boston can get back to normal pretty soon, along with the rest of the world. For the most part, the protests have been positive. It's just, it's the people that aren't there for the right reason. The people that are there just for the destruction of property and madness. I mean, that stuff's got to go. I understand protesting. I understand that the bad cops out there need to be brought to justice. Not all cops are bad. I'll go on record saying most cops are good men and women. There's just a few bad apples out there and they got to change their ways. If you like this video, you know what to do next. Give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I always answer all the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to Detours. Click that red subscribe button. And while you're clicking away, click that small bell. It'll give you instant notification every single time I upload a brand new detour. Check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram, at Derek Millen, D-E-R-E-K-M-I-L-L-E-N. On Instagram, I'm posting pictures where I'm currently filming a detour, and you're going to see where I am several weeks before I post that video up on YouTube. And as always, I'll catch you on the next detour.